Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. I am the Twisted Jedi, and I am super excited to bring you today's video. I know I've been away for a few days, but with good reason, and I'll let you guys know in a minute. But in today's video, I am going to be discussing the blog post on the forums and giving you a full breakdown of everything regarding the new progression system, how it works, when it is coming, and what you should do with your credits and crafting parts that you've already saved up. Now, for those of you who follow me on social media, you will know that I've recently been invited into the EA Game Changers program, which is extremely exciting and super humbling for me as a creator. This week, I have been in Stockholm, Sweden at the DICE office testing some different things in regards to the new progression. This has been an absolutely amazing experience, and I just wanted to start off by saying thank you to all the other game changers and the developers that have made me feel really really comfortable and welcome on my first trip anyways let's get into the progression stuff which is what you guys are really wanting to see there will be two parts to this video the first we'll discuss the overall progression update and how gameplay star cards and leveling up will work after the patch in April and the second will be answering some of the most asked questions about the future progression this next part I will be reading from the original blog post itself on the battlefront 2 website so it will be a little bit rough and unscripted but nonetheless I hope Hope you guys enjoy it. The post starts off by saying a major Star Wars Battlefront 2 update is cleared for takeoff. Revamped progression is coming 3 slash 16. Obviously that is today's date. It started by saying since release we've been hard at work making changes based on your feedback to create a better game for all our players. Today we're happy to announce that Star Wars Battlefront 2 has a progression update which includes a complete redesign of the in-game progression system which will begin rolling out on the 21st of March. There are some additional changes coming to the cosmetics in the game but we'll get to that in a little bit. So guys there is your date. The first change will be March 21st for the progression system so make sure to keep an eye out for an update on that date. It goes on to say, with this update, progression is now linear. Star cards or any other item impacting gameplay will only be earned through gameplay and will not be available for purchase. Instead, you'll earn experience points for the classes, heroes, characters, and ships that you choose to play in multiplayer. If you earn enough experience points to gain a level for that specific unit, you'll receive one skill point that can be used to unlock or upgrade the eligible star card you'd like to equip to that class. You'll keep everything you've already earned and unlocked, you will keep all the star cards, all the heroes, weapons, or anything else you've already earned. What you have earned will still be available to use with this update, regardless of how much or how little progress you've already made. It goes on to say crates no longer include star cards and cannot be purchased. So obviously with a big controversy around the crates earlier in the year and with the game's release, they wanted to change that. So now crates are earned by logging in daily, completing milestones, and through time challenges. Now, before you guys freak out and say, oh, well, they're still doing loot crates, blah, blah, blah. Inside these crates, you'll only find credits or cosmetic items, such as emotes or victory poses, and later on some skins, but nothing that impacts gameplay. Starting in April, you'll be able to get appearances directly through in-game credits or crystals. The first new appearances are coming very, very soon, meaning you'll be able to grab new looks for your heroes and troopers directly by using either credits that you've earned in-game or crystals, which will be the purchasable currency that they will add in with microtransactions. If you've ever dreamed of being part of the resistance as a Rodian, your chance is right around the corner. So we do get a little bit of a hint there guys that there will be obviously cosmetic updates into the game later on in April and they will be either purchasable with your credits that you've earned in game or purchasable with real money and that is how the microtransactions will work. I think this is a super good idea because obviously there are a lot of games that make cosmetics purchasable and that's pretty much what they're going for here and it's definitely a good step and it doesn't affect the game gameplay at all and they've completely removed the pay to win option that they had at the start. They also gave us a hint at one of the skins that we are going to get. Obviously they said the Rodian, your chance is right around the corner. So that's going to be definitely one of the skins that we see in April, which is really, really cool. It goes on to say these changes are a major step as we continue to improve the core of the gameplay and add new content. There's also a lot more to come. In addition to continued balance patches, we will also add a number of modes to Star Wars Battlefront 2 in the coming months, offering several standout brand new ways to play. Some of these, like the recently limited time jetpack cargo, are radically different than anything you've experienced in the game before, and we are excited to surprise you with what we have planned. The Star Wars Battlefront 2 progression update releases on March 21, with more content rolling out in the following weeks. We're truly excited for the future of the game, and we would be honored if you would join us in the journey. Now guys, that is the end of the part one. Obviously, that is the full progression overhaul. If you guys didn't really understand what it said in the blog post, 
I'll just give you a quick rundown. So you will level up each specific class. So if you play as an assault class, you will level up for that class. If you play as a heavy, you will level up for that class. If you play as Ray, you will level up for Ray. And every time you grow a level, you will gain one skill point back. Now that skill point is what can be used on star cards and it's definitely a much, much better system. Every star card is going to cost one skill point. So you're only gonna have to level up one time to unlock the star card. And then you're gonna have to level up one more time to upgrade that star card. But obviously in saying that, your character will have to be a certain level in order to unlock certain star cards that are seem to be more popular or more powerful in the game. So for example, if you want to upgrade the improved impact grenade for the heavy, it is going to be quite a low level because it's one of the base star cards. If you wanna unlock the detonite charge, however, which is probably in my opinion, a little bit more powerful, you're going to have to be at a higher level. In saying this, I will get to it in a minute in one of the questions, but your level that you are currently with each class and hero will transfer across in the progression update. But before I say too much on that, let's jump into some of the important FAQs that are also posted on the forums. Now, I hope this video doesn't go too long, guys. I will try and keep it to the main questions that are on here, but I will do the best I can. So just bear with me and let's get to all this new awesome information. Obviously, I've already said the first part is microtransactions actions are returning, but they will strictly be cosmetic. So they will only be for appearances for classes and heroes. Can I buy star cards with money? No, we are removing all star cards from crates and introducing a system where leveling up your units exclusively by playing them and earning experience. So there's no more pay to win, no more star card purchases with real money. It's all got to be earned by you. What happens to my star cards in the transition? Now I just answered this guys, your star cards will still carry over in the transition as we your player level so don't freak out that you're gonna lose everything how should i prepare for the spring progression update now guys this is the big question that a lot of you have been asking what should i do should i buy crates should i save up credits should i save up crafting parts what is going to happen after the progression what should i do well here is my advice guys it depends on what you'd rather do and the post does say this a little bit if you want to speed up progression save up for cosmetics those are gonna be your two options. If you wanna maximize your unit levels at the outset of the new system, you should primarily focus on earning crafting parts. Now, what you wanna do at the moment is save up those credits, buy as many crates as you can, and stack your crafting parts if you're looking to upgrade things after progression. Now, if cosmetics is something you're really, really interested in and you want different appearances, then definitely save up your credits. That's gonna be a big thing coming in April. There's a ton of new skins coming, not just for troopers, but for heroes. So if you want that sort of thing in the game and you want to run around looking a little bit different to everyone else then definitely save those credits the next question was can i still use crafting parts no you cannot use crafting parts to create star cards that is going to be removed from the game and obviously the new system will come in in march obviously i have already explained how the skill point system works when you level up with that class you will gain one skill point and that will be earned per level to use on upgrading certain star cards or unlocking star cards for the first time if you don't already have it now, if you're wondering why I told you to save your crafting parts, later in the future, there will be the chance to exchange them for skill points that we'll be able to use to upgrade your star cards that you want. So guys, that's definitely my recommendation if you wanna do that. Now, I am going over the main things that I think is important, guys. If you wanna see the complete post, I will leave a link down in the description so you guys can check out the whole thing. But the next thing I think is important is what the level caps will be in the new system. Initially, trooper classes will be capped at 70, obviously that being the max out number of star cards you can have at purple level. So heroes, starfighters, and hero starfighters will be capped at 40. The armor, speeder, enforcer, and aerial classes will be capped at 30 because of their lack of star cards. But even if you cap out your unit, you can still earn credits when you increase your player rank. The next big thing, if it wasn't already clear, guys, is are crystals returning and what they will be used for? Now, yes, crystals will be returning in April as a paid microtransaction. You can pay to have crystals, but they will strictly be used to unlock appearances that players can select in-game for multiplayer. So obviously, it's not going to be any pay to win like I mentioned before, but it's definitely something cool to have if you want to run around looking different on the battlefield. Now, if you didn't hear it earlier in the video, microtransactions and monetization will return in April is the target 
currently to turn on revamped microtransaction system with more details to come. But like I said, that is going to be purely cosmetic. So those are the main things guys that are going to be made changes in the next month or so. So keep an eye out for that. Definitely let me know down in the comments what you think of this new microtransaction system and also the new progression system. Personally, I think it's a definite step in the right direction and it's really, really good to see that they've finally got this sorted. Now, if you guys do want to see more on this, I will have some cool stuff going up next week. I will definitely talk about that in a future video. Now, if you guys enjoyed this video and the whole progression revamp explanation, I really appreciate you all tuning in for such a long video and I will have some definite new stuff coming out soon. I've just got to get back home and work on more things then. But for now, hopefully this is some good news you guys like to see. If you enjoy this change by EA and DICE, definitely leave a thumbs up down below. It's a big, big change and it's going to be absolutely amazing. I think it's going to bring a lot of players back to this game and those people that still have it and are grinding out like I have been and still playing. You guys are awesome. You've stuck through the heart transplant that this game had to make and it's going to be really, really rewarding. Also, we have new skins to look forward to in April. So that's going to be awesome as well. I'm really, really excited to get some of those because my star cards are pretty much where I want them to be for the majority. Anyways, guys, if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe down below and turn on the notifications button. As like I said, I have some really cool videos coming out and I'm sure you guys want to see them. So I'm going to get out of here. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I apologize how long the video was, but there was a lot of information to get into this one vid. So I really appreciate that as always. Anyways, I am the Twisted Jedi and I'm going to sign off now. May the force be with you always.